Best of luck. Our final guest has been the front man of everyone's favourite Saturday night show for the past three series. He's the host with the most, who's always there for all the contestants, whether they're commiserating or celebrating. You all right? Why are you upset? Do you think they've made a mistake? Yes, I do. Cannot strike people. I don't care what the people I'm all right. I just said this. <laughs> You owe Louis Walsh a big drink. Yeah. I don't care what those oh, I feel great now. I just need to go and have a cigarette in the face. <laughs> <laughs> And Dermot joins oh, us now. What a, um, what a lead up to this series. Surely unprecedented. I guess so. It just sort of ends up happening on us. You know what it's like. Yeah, but circumstances every year, just it, end up taking over rather than, you know. You, but it grows every, every year. You sort of think there's no way it can be as big as last year. And then again this year, it's it's happened. I've got to be honest. You wonder who's watching it because you do go everybody. Yeah, but exactly. But you do go. You know, the viewing figures go up every year, and it's wonderful, and it's a really humbling experience when that happens. But you do look at it and go, where, is it, where are these people come from? <laughs> it's the seventh year, so... The pressure on the final 12 now that have gone through must be immense. Because these guys, you used to sort of get to know them throughout the final shows. Sure. But now, you really know, they're almost stars in their own right before Saying they even that enter that Grimshaw first show. Saying that the other day, like, when, he, when we were at Judge's Houses and he got through, just afterwards, just, you know, when we finished filming, I was just saying, you know, the extraordinary thing is, when, when someone sees your first audition, it's not like they then go, oh, I'm going to be interested in that guy. I'd like to get to know that guy. That just happens. And before mm. you know it, you know, it's not like, you know, a few people see him and then the viewing figures build and so forth. He becomes an overnight star like that. And then it's up to him, obviously, to sustain that. Mm. What about the controversy this, uh, this year? I, mean, uh, I suppose you've got to sort of toe the party line and be quite careful what you say. But 40,000 people joined a Facebook campaign saying that, uh, that the, the dismissal of Gamu was a catastrophe. And we read in the papers every day the story seems to change um, whether or not there have been issues within the family or not issues within the family. Well, I think that's true or what's not true. The sad true. thing, of course, is, is, you know, what's going on with her externally. And, and you know, and, and we're just trying to give her as much support as we possibly can. But I think people have to understand that up to the point that we get into the studio, the show isn't a democracy, do you know? The, the, the judges make those decisions. And you know what Cheryl and Danny especially are like, mm. you know, no one puts words in their mouth and they make the decisions, you know, based on who they think best represent them in the final. And, and they've done that. When, they, when you saw um, Cheryl's final three, her, the choice that she'd made, did you sort of go, hmm, that's you know that You know what always happens when you go to the judges' houses is you, you, you try and cheat it. It's almost like getting your Christmas presents early. You try and, like, get your head up to the door when people audition. You're thinking, oh, what are they like? And what I will say is not one person, not one girl stood out at Cheryl's house. No, you didn't hear Gamma and think she was, you know, she was in any way, shape or form better than any of the other girls. Mm. No one really shone. No one really shone.